audible? Hmm? Can you hear me? So, uh, shall we start the class? Huh? Okay, everything okay? All right. Uh, very good evening, everyone. I hope you all are keeping safe during this pandemic, and uh, your new faculty is now in your class. <laughs> right? You have another species uh, as part of this, uh, you know, classroom ecosystem. So a new species uh, is coming to teach you the subject of uh, environment ecology, right? Although we all belong to the same species, Homo sapiens sapiens, modern man. Then, but uh, the topic is that uh, I have to go into various aspects on that. So that's what I've used the word species for myself there, right? You all are, uh, you know, unique in your own ways. So, um, dear students, we are going to start environment and ecology. Uh, myself, uh, Neeraj Nachiketa, who will be teaching you environment subject. And today we are having the first class on that. Now, I don't have to tell you the importance of the subject. You all have joined Vision IS uh, classroom program. You have gone to the previous year question papers. You are aware what is the nature of the question paper and the way the subject is uh, being dealt. This subject is a, a subject which requires a very dynamic approach to study, to remember facts and again solve the question there. So what I would like to bring here that the subject of environment ecology from UPSC point of view, from both prelims exam and the main exam perspective, you have two areas are there. One is the static uh, area, static part, right, the static part comes, comes into that. That is a, basically a theory. That is a part of the theory part which you have to be aware of that, right. Second, what comes to the dynamic part. Dynamic part of the subject. Now, this is the application part. how you apply the subject of environment ecology in terms of conservation, conservation of wild animals, let's say tiger or elephant or one horn rhinoceros, right, we come across several names of birds or mammals, reptiles in newspaper in the current aspect and there are several government programs for conservation and management of threatened species there, right, today we are facing the burning problem regarding environmental pollution air pollution, water pollution, land pollution are now the pressing you know, problems in modern times. Because of the overpopulation, then uncontrolled, unregulated urbanization, industrialization, right, the mankind, the human civilization, the way we are polluting the environment, the way we are degrading our natural resources, the way we are you know, uh, destroying the habitats of wild animals. Right? These all have caused severe environmental problems in today's time. So how you understand such kind of environmental topics and you are sensitive towards it. UPSC exam, in civil service exam, as an administrator, that as a part of the government machinery, today you have to implement number of government programs and you have to be sensitive enough for the environment whether it is at the rural level or at the urban level or when you look into the part of district development or in terms of fighting poverty, right, uh, leading to the in employment, all those things what comes from social economic perspective, environment is linked with that. That's what I said is a dynamic part, the application. How do we apply the theory into our own day-to-day -day life? How we are going to implement government programs Right, uh, in a such a way that there is a sustainable development. Right, these are the now the questions which are being asked. Right, so you have to connect. This has to be connected. It has to be connected together. Right, now this subject is uh, another subject where you have to be aware of the three very important uh, areas which I would like to bring here in the classroom. One is that you have to be aware of the current development, current aspect. When you read newspaper, when you read magazine, right, 
whatever you come across in current aspect, the Hindu newspaper, or let's say the Indian Express, Vision IS provides you monthly current affairs, right? Whatever development comes from current perspective, right? IUCN Red Data Book of certain species, critically endangered, endangered, vulnerable, right? Pollution aspect which you come across, electronic waste, e-waste generation in India, biomedical waste, now the COVID-19, the current pandemic, right? The current pandemic is an eye-opening for everyone, right? And this pandemic, COVID-19, right, is a lesson for the human being that the development, the way we are doing, the way we are getting near to animals, right, the pangolin or bats or any such wild animals, which are reservoirs of deadly viruses and then human animal contact where such kind of deadly virus can spread from animals to humans right? and then can cause such kind of global pandemic it's a lesson which human beings right, came to realize based on this COVID-19 pandemic so environment that's what I said I have said is very very important and here what is very important about the current aspect is that you have a multi-dimensional aspect right you, you don't have to study environment ecology in silos right is a multi-dimensional topic where every areas of general studies every areas of general studies whether you talk about history culture economy geography polity governance every aspect of your general studies will come to the subject of environment and ecology you have to relate every aspect of environment ecology syllabus with the other areas of general studies you have to connect with that you have to relate with that that's what this subject is multi-dimensional every area of scientific discipline that right, will be linked with environment ecology my work my task as a teacher as an as a person who teach you the subject is to link with various dimensions right and it is very very important for both prelims exam at the same time the main examination right so one aspect which comes the current aspect second what comes here that is a ministry of environment forest and climate change MUFCC right ministry of environment forest and climate change the central government ministry right what you come across in the PIB, Press Information Bureau, PIB update, right? Or when you read any aspect of the annual report of Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, right? You will come across government schemes, government programs are there, right? Recently, Government of India has started with Project Dolphin. You all are aware, National Aquatic Animal, right? Gangetic Dolphin. And for the conservation and management of dolphins in India, the government of India started with the project dolphin, right? Government of India wants to bring cheetah, cheetah that fastest uh, this land mammal from Namibia, from Africa to India. Supreme Court has already allowed the central government to reintroduce cheetah in India, right? Again, the current aspect. There was earlier proposal by the central government to relocate Asiatic lion from Gir National Park in Gujarat to Kuno Palpur in Madhya Pradesh. Right? It's still under, the decision is still pending. The Asiatic lion, where the numbers have increased, and is the lion species, right, which is uh, only found in India, nowhere else. Asiatic lion. Right? Now, relocation of Asiatic lion to the central part of the country, Madhya Pradesh, MP, Kuno Palpur. Is there a still government is considering that? At the same time, reintroduction of cheetah from African cheetah from Africa to India. Right, the Supreme Court has given the green signal to that. NTCA, National Tiger Conservation Authority. By right, 2006, NTCA was set up by amending the Wildlife Protection Act 1972, WPA 1972, which is a major law in the country in terms of protection of wildlife in India. And then the amendment in the year 2006. NTCA was set up. National Tiger Conservation Authority was set up by the government. Right? NTCA deals with the tiger conservation and the declaration of tiger reserves in India. Same statutory body, NTCA, has been now tasked for proper implementation of 
चीता रीइंट्रोडक्शन इन इंडिया एफ्रीकन चीता टू इंडिया द रीइंट्रोडक्शन पार्ट हैज बिन नाउ दिन विल बी कैरिड बाय एनटीसीए एनटीसीए देन वाइल्ड लाइफ क्राइम कंट्रोल ब्यूरो डब्ल्यूसीसीबी नेशनल बोर्ड फॉर वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंट्रल जू अथॉरिटी दिज ऑल आर स्टैचुटरी बॉडीज विच आर फॉर्म अंडर द लॉ एंड दे ऑल वर्क अंडर एमओएफसीसी राइट इट कम्स अंडर मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ इन्वायरमेंट फॉरेस्ट एंड क्लाइमेट चेंज वी हैव मेनी साइंटिफिक ऑटोनोमस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सच एज जूलॉजिकल सर्वे ऑफ इंडिया जेड एस आई बोटेनिकल सर्वे ऑफ इंडिया बी एस आई वाइल्ड लाइफ इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंडिया डब्ल्यू आई आई अगेन इट कम्स अंडर एमओ एफ सी सी तो वॉट एवर द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट द प्रोग्राम्स पॉलिसीज इनिशिएटिव आर ऑल इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द एग्जाम राइट दे ऑल आर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द एग्जामिनेशन तो यू हैव टू कनेक्ट द करेंट डेवलपमेंट करेंट एस्पेक्ट एंड देन मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ इन्वायरमेंट फॉरेस्ट क्लाइमेट चेंज पार्ट ऑफ इट यू हैव टू कनेक्ट फ्रॉम दैट पार्ट At the same time, the third aspect which I am uh, writing here is that uh, you have to know the syllabus. You have to connect the concepts. All those concepts and theory part, which is a part of syllabus, biodiversity, climate change, pollution, right? All these areas, you have to connect with the current aspect with this part. You have to connect with the government programs and all, and the government program will be connected with the current syllabus there. these all are interconnected questions will not be only stand alone there are certain question which will be direct right or there will be certain question which will have different components there now if you see the over the last uh, if we look, analyze if we analyze the paper here analysis of uh, our prelims exam if you take the prelims exam right from 2011 when the new pattern of the exam was brought if you just simply analyze this um trend and see what are the important topics where upsc is asking question so let me list down the topics here upsc is continuously in the examination asking questions from following topics you will find one is the threatened species this is one of the very important topic of the examination 2020 prelims exam itself you have question regarding the musk deer kasturi mirg or musk deer bara singha swamp deer right you have so many questions there right elephant tiger india is full of uh, biodiversity india is a biodiversity rich country right so what is the first area which you will find continuously in upsc exam the question is from the threatened species right that is where the question is being asked and the red data book ayushan red data book again you have to connect from the current aspect you have to link with the current aspect from the topics point of view right then what comes here the second aspect which you need to be aware that is a protected areas network conservation part of it we have entire list of protected areas in the country let's say wildlife sanctuary bird sanctuary national parks biosphere reserves right community reserve right protected forest right important bird areas ibas right mpa marine protected areas mpas we have so many measures by which we have declared the protected areas so in terms of conservation here in terms of conservation and management of biodiversity and wildlife right to their in situ conservation ex situ conservation even the botanical garden geological parks and all those kind of a ex situ areas they are also very very important for the exam right so here conservation management right is in this case in situ in situ and ex situ conservation right government uh, programs there right all the government programs what comes here all the projects and programs uh, right uh, this all becomes very very important there right all the acts 
all the acts government act programs and all this all becomes very very important right now when it comes to the part of the topics which i am listing here right upsc has asked continuous question in all such areas you will find the continuous questions have been asked right and biodiversity part this part becomes very very important then you will find questions on the climate change global warming and climate change global warming and climate change topic is again a very important topic which you will find at least two or three questions are asked in the examination right unep triple c united nation framework convention on climate change then you have a topic from let's say kyoto protocol paris agreement carbon market mechanism india's national action plan on climate change right ndc nationally determined contribution international solar alliance so many topics are there in terms of global warming and climate change you'll find that then in terms of pollution aspect you'll find air pollution water pollution right even the current government programs aqy air quality index namami gange then we have a west management rules all the acts you have to be aware of environmental laws that whatever the legislation we have acts policies rules there are sometimes environment protection act under this central government has notified rules for e waste management biomedical waste management solid waste management right you will find the questions with respect to the biogeography part of it if i bring about this one protected areas you will find river then hills biogeographic areas right geography linked with the biological part ecological part biodiversity hotspots rivers lakes wetlands wetland conservation then what comes at the international level you will come across the areas from conventions there are different conventions uh, protocols and agreements which are at the international level where the government of india is a party to that let's say for example in biodiversity cbd convention of biological diversity where there are two important protocols one is cartagena protocol on biological safety bio safety second is the nagoya protocol on access and benefit sharing right climate change unep triple c paris agreement kyoto protocol desertification uncccd united nation convention to combat desertification wetland conservation ramsar ramsar convention on wetlands of international importance ramsar right all these are all these conventions on different areas of environment becomes very very important for the questions in the exam and upsc can ask you any question right regarding the cop also conference of parties cop decisions like last year gib was asked desert national park in rajasthan and the great indian bustard the arid area the bird the gib bird critically endangered bird which is called godavan is a state bird of rajasthan barmer and jaisalmer jaisalmer you have a desert national park the question can be variety of them it is not a very specific that you will read this one only the question will come there i'll give you the sources to refer but this is where you have the entire aspect of the question which you come across there right main examination if you look at the topic from mains perspective right if you look at the main examination environment ecology topic will come into gs3 paper gs3 paper main examination you have topics from environment ecology now what is given here in the G, uh, main examination in the main examination you will find here one area comes from here that is the natural resources degradation of natural resources and pollution right you have involved a pollution topic there then you have a conservation topic biodiversity conservation or conservation of forest wetland different types of natural resources you have a topic in the main examination and on two to three questions you'll find in the main exam are based on environmental aspect then you have a very important topic in the main examination eia environmental impact assessment environmental impact assessment right major projects mining hydropower project 
thermal power plant, nuclear power plant, infrastructure projects. We need to carry out EIA, Environmental Impacts Assessment under EIA rules. We have EIA rules notified under the Environment Protection Act 1986, EPA 1986. The last rule is 2006. Now the central government has come out with a new draft. There is now new draft of EIA rules 2020 that right, prepared by the central government which would change the earlier rules. Earlier rules what we follow right now on EIA that is the 2006. Now government want to bring change into that. It was asked in the main exam EIA part. So GS3 paper you have two to three subjective questions 150 words or 250 words which you have to write on the environmental aspect. You have to come across and you have to write in the environmental perspective there. Pre-exam you are getting factual question, national parks, sanctuaries and all these threatened species, right, uh, conventions, protocols, agreements, legal act like scheduled species, schedule 126 of wildlife protection act, right, uh, habitat protection. You also have in prelims exam but 2011 and 13. Up to 2011 to 13, you'll find there have been never several questions on ecology aspect, ecological concept. So let me write there also that ecological concept there. Now it has not been very important. Now this ecological concepts are not very important, but UPSC has asked question. UPSC has asked questions in the examination on the ecological concept, the principles there. Ecosystem, food chain, food web pyramid if you see the previous year exam question 2011 till 2014 you'll find such questions are asked now UPC have diverted UPC exam is an uncertain exam and given the fact environment ecology it is not a kind of a question which will be only static it will be mixed with the current aspect government programs a lot of things will come now in UPC exam ecological concepts are not much asked but yes you have to study you have to be aware of the theory part, you have to be aware of the syllabus part. We will discuss the ecological concept, we will cover in the classroom. But again the questions are there, food chain, right, uh, carbon cycle, water cycle, nitrogen cycle, again linking with pollution aspect, climate change part, ozone depletion, ozone layer, right, photochemical smog, all these have been asked in the exam, linking with the theory part, right. So this is very very important which you have to always keep in mind. Now sources to refer, right? Whatever sources, what sources you have to follow for the preparation of the exam. Now let me come across uh, the sources which you have to follow, right? The sources which you have to follow is the following there. I will just clean the whiteboard. So um, to prepare this exam, what all source you need to follow? These are the sources to follow. Let me write the... I don't know how many of you are going to appear in this coming exam. Since you all are the new batch, this is the batch for 2022 exam. You have a more than one year time, right? You all have got more than one year's time for preparation of the examination because most of you are going to appear in 2022. That's what you have joined in this particular batch, right? So your target is 2022 exam. And you will get to again see the questions in the June month, 27 June, when the 2021 exam will be conducted by the UPSC. You will get more idea about the, the trend of the questions as in environment ecology. But since all of you have been preparing for next year, 2022 exam, you have sufficient time to read and prepare for this exam. So what I would like to bring here, in terms of sources to refer, For preparation of the examination, what source you have to follow? The first part is the syllabus part. So from the syllabus point of view, right, to cover the syllabus, all the theory part, all the uh, part of the, you have to follow the Vision IS. Vision IS has uh, prepared the content there. Vision IS, uh, you have a classroom study material. Now this classroom study material 
has been divided into three parts. You have part one, then you have part two, and part three. Is the most updated. Is the most updated and revised material. Part one, part two, part three of Vision IS study material. You don't require any textbook. No need to follow any textbook. You don't have to follow any textbook. If you have any textbook, you can keep it aside for time being. You don't have to follow that. NCRT. When you talk about NCRT, right? NCRT in NCRT book in NCRT class twelfth biology. You have the last unit, chapter three, four chapters are chapter thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen, sixteen. Now this has been added to the syllabus. Even you don't have to read the NCERT book. The four chapters, which are the part of the NCERT textbook of biology, the last last unit, unit ten. If you follow the Vision IS material. the current material part 1 part 2 part 3 have been very comprehensively covering the ncert book books but those of you want to read right you are free to read that right you have time because since you are going to appear in 2022 you have time so please go through the ncert book but this uh, content from the ncert has been filtered and is given in the vision is study material right now the next what comes here is another content which comes nios nios you have a environment module right you have a environment module now this is also has been added to the vision is study material again you don't have to read nios study material or igno or ugc net any kind of a textbook you don't require part 1 part 2 part 3 study materials on environment will be given to you by the vision is management and i consider sufficient that is sufficient for the preparation of the exam right so this is sufficient part part of it it covers the entire syllabus now what is second part second is your vision is current affairs magazine vision is monthly current affairs monthly current affairs right you have all the current aspect right you have a current aspect on that so whatever covers in the monthly current affairs magazine right over the last one year plus the class you have a teacher who teach you the monthly current affairs i as a teacher will teach you the basic theory part the syllabus part of it correct the monthly current affairs classes are being conducted by other faculty i will not teach there the detailed current aspect is covered by other faculty which you have been going through right you have a monthly current affairs magazine and the classes for that right so whoever takes that monthly current affairs class please attend the class of the monthly current affairs please go through the weekly current affairs daily current affairs monthly current affairs provided by vision is then you have third source which i am writing here that is a vision is before the prelims exam gives you pt365 pt365 is a very important document which covers the entire one year of current aspect on environment ecology and it covers from various sources if you are following the monthly current affairs magazine plus vision is pt365 it will cover you broad aspect from the current perspective and then you have a for main examination you have mains 365 right you have a document and the classes for that right so for upsc preparation whenever you have time like so for example the hindu the hindu newspaper right indian express then there is a magazine called as a down to earth down to earth magazine that is a published by center for science and environment 
all those current aspects there's all this current aspect whatever comes in the geography and you down to earth indian express the hindu paper whatever the news comes into that right as you keep on preparing you please read that but again you will have a compilation in the monthly current affairs this one there will be compilation on that but i will request all of you to read newspaper newspaper becomes a very important source i'll demonstrate that part then pib you know press information bureau pib updates yojana kurukshetra india year book all of you are following that is not that um, i am something you know telling you something new in the classroom no you have been doing that i'm not bringing any something new in the classroom you have been all following this kind of sources yojana kurukshetra magazines and uh, india year book and all you are aware of it pib and all you are aware of it right i'm just trying to bring again in the classroom that your efforts should be relevant effort it should not be something that you reading and then getting lost right let's say for example if you have to learn uh, any kind of uh, you know hobby or if a hobby there and when you have to start let's say we want to go for swimming so if you want to go for swimming you will not jump into bay of bengal right will you jump in the bay of bengal or arabian sea that depends on where your native place is there whether tamil nadu and kerala uh, or kerala will you jump in the bay of bengal or arabian sea that will be suicidal right so where you will start from a baby swimming pool a small baby swimming pool in your society in your gated apartment then you go to the bigger swimming pool once you master that art of swimming in the swimming pool then you will jump into a lake right river and then you will think of jumping into the ocean but in the first time you jump in the ocean you are bound to drown upsc exam is like that you have to go step wise sequential one by one right you have to go into that way is not that it should not happen that all of a sudden you have taken a you know a book i'll not name the book and then you are lost right you are lost you are not able to you know either master the concept the theory part not the application part not the current part you are lost that's what i am making uh, very clearly in the first class itself this subject is a very simple subject but at the same time it is a very difficult subject very challenging subject if you do not uh, prepare according to a better strategy it will be very difficult for you to solve questions of environment in the examination that's what i have said you have to go step wise don't read hundreds of books don't read hundreds of materials and the websites and all this i will tell you what websites you have to visit right in my class in my class whatever topics i will deal in the classroom right and wherever the relevant websites are there i will be opening in the classroom demonstrating you live in the classroom what to read what not to read so don't worry about the websites right you are getting enough of support from vision is management you are getting enough of the study materials you are getting mini tests and test series right current aspect you are getting lot of things from vision is first try to master that if you master that then there comes the next level right so since you all are beginner right you are now starting with the subject so you have to go in a very slow manner but in a better manner you have to understand the subject and learn the every aspect of the subject in terms of qualifying the examination and i'll tell you that environment as a subject is not only upsc civil service exam this subject is also very relevant for other competitive exams other state pcs exams if you are also appearing in state level exams uppcs or ras or mpsc or any kind of state level exam 
again this subject will be there will be questions there in the prelims exam 10 to 12 questions are being asked from environmental ecology you will again get the question from the environmental ecology so there are multiple sources are there is not a one source or two source how you go about it how do you read that that is the most important one but i will guide you i will guide you in that today is the first class i am just giving you the kind of understanding i am just giving you a kind of overview but how to go about it how to prepare i will guide you in the classroom there how to work on the you will be guided by me but again i am saying that current affairs materials monthly current affairs and all you have to again read there you have to follow that one let's say for example if i just uh, demonstrate there let's say for example the hindu let let me bring about that let's say for example i am coming to some kind of demonstration part let me take certain sample right let's say for example i am opening here the hindu simply if you go to the hindu environment right i'm just uh, it will come to your screen you'll be able to see on your screen and i'll demonstrate with examples let's say the hindu environment now based on the syllabus you have to filter out based on the syllabus the lot of things are there in the current aspect everything you cannot read right everything you cannot read so you have to correct from the syllabus to the current aspect right there is a hindu hindu environment news right how do you filter how do you filter that how do you read that right you have to develop this art there is a completely art to develop that like for example in terms of here for example now look look at here you have like a environment part here you'll come across now look at here dal lake dal lake among several others in jammu and kashmir to be declared protected wetlands so what you have found in the keyword wetlands so what comes the first thing what is a wetland what are types of wetlands how wetlands are important for human beings and the environment what are threats to wetlands right what is ramsar convention what are the objectives of ramsar convention what are ramsar sites which are ramsar sites in india this is the sequence unfortunately unfortunately i found most of the students they do the reverse most of the students go reverse they will first read the current aspect they will have a very very poor understanding very poor understanding about concept of wetlands examples of wetlands they may not be knowing completely the ramsar convention what are the criteria on which ramsar sites are declared but they will read all the current aspect and i am very sure that in your batch in your batch there will be several students doing this kind of uh, preparation so what i am giving you way out what is the way out when you take newspaper and you come across any article you first select the keywords and then ask yourself do you know what is a wetland what are the examples of wetlands then you connect dal lake dal lake in kashmir how in what way the it is connected to the wetland upsc always ask question on the periphery related to that particular article upsc will never ask you direct question dal lake everybody knows dal lake in srinagar and kashmir part everybody knows that it will be connected with geography it will connected with economic aspect and based on that the question will be asked right now i'll take it to the article let's say take that article i'm just opening that article right if we take this article here now look at here this is the here given you have a you know um, shikaras in the dal lake right beautiful uh, lake in the in kashmir valley right um, lot of movies have been shot there right is a picture queue place what you have in the image there and then if you take here in this case here now look at here see what is given here 
the other lakes which are to be declared protected wetlands include purva mandal pura mandal lake also called chota kashi located in samba district government has not put across the proposal there is a proposal pending on that srinagar is a dull lake among five famous ones in jammu and kashmir to be declared as a protected wetlands that was the news that came on the wednesday the other lakes the names have been given there and what is very important now look at here jammu and kashmir wetland authority jnk wetland authority has proposed declaring such wetlands such uh, lakes as important wetlands and the protection part of it so what i want to tell you that this is the news article you have to connect with the syllabus part right you have to link with the syllabus part of it conservation in this part you have to link with the syllabus wular lake wular lake is already a declared ramsar site in india wular lake is the largest fresh water lake in india is already a part of the ramsar convention part of it now see here environment protection act and, and wetland conservation and management rules do you know wetland conservation management rules there is a question mark when you read such article are you aware what are the provisions given under wetland conservation and management rules upsc will catch you there all those experts who said the question will be based on this kind of management rules not the dull lake and something which everybody knows that are you aware of the conservation initiatives in the country do you know about those kind of areas right so here it comes into that now i'll come to another part of it let's say pib right what do you have to follow in the pib year end review you have year end achievement i am just typing here year end achievement i am just demonstrating right now in the classroom the achievements of ministry of environment forest and climate change and let's say i am writing here 2020 december month every ministry and departments comes out with the achievement over the last one year and you have all the highlights of whatever the initiatives taken by the ministry over the last one year that is highlighted there and i'll tell you that there are questions asked from there there are questions on that and you'll find here year end review and now let's look at here such kind of uh, achievements and the review there the upsc question setter will ask questions on that right so here you can see here india want to increase the share of non fossil fuel to 175 gigawatt by 2022 solar power wind power biomass power and small hydro power 100 gigawatt solar power 60 gigawatt wind power 10 gigawatt biomass power and 5 gigawatt small hydro power right and we want to expand this to 450 gigawatt by 2030 under the paris agreement of the unfccc united nation framework convention on climate change then degraded land right tree cover forest cover survey of india forest survey of india now you can see here national clean air program ncap are you aware of this program this is the upsc upsc prelims exam question will be based on such kind of a government programs like then you can see here what is mentioned here india cooling action plan every year there are questions asked in the exam which are very new india cooling action plan in terms of climate change and the greenhouse gas generation refrigeration part of it now now you see here you have here another one now look at here hazardous west management rules management transparency rules all these what you find in the pib cop 14 unccd 14th conference of parties which was hosted by india right new delhi and the host and hosting of unccd united nation convention to combat desertification right this is what you have there bs6 uh, compliant vehicle bharat stand bharat stage right based on euro norm 6 bs6 compliant vehicles in india current aspect this is a current aspect then you can find forest and wildlife right asiatic lion conservation project asiatic lion conservation project right then here that uh, the part of tigers count in india 
tiger census then total forest cover increased to 24.56% right then what you find here in terms of kampa compensatory a forest a forestation fund kampa kampa part of it right then comes here you can see climate change all this what you find in the pib this pib update that becomes important for the exam now what would i would like to uh, do here what i would like to bring here is a very very important one let's say when you study about national parks sanctuary biosphere reserve you have one government database called envis what is the government database envis i am opening that one e n v i s let's say wildlife institute of india and let's say tiger reserve you want to know tiger reserves in india is a very comprehensive database which contain all the information about national parks sanctuary tiger reserves elephant reserve biosphere reserves ramsar sites everything is given in this particular uh, web page whenever you read newspaper you have to connect with those kind of mapping part biogeographical part and the mapping part of it right so you have this one uh, when you open this site you'll get to know and read about that so current affairs uh, is the source but how do you read current affairs is very very important i have just opened few website and i have just told you some of the aspect but don't worry don't worry because when i'll start with the topic and wherever the current aspect will be there i will be linking with that but what is the first thing what is the very first thing syllabus what is very first thing syllabus the theory part of it if you don't know the syllabus if you don't know the theory part current affairs is meaningless i consider current affairs meaningless if you don't know the syllabus if you don't know the theory part of it so we will be first trying to understand the theoretical part of it then we'll connect the theory with the facts application current aspect government programs then we'll connect with that right so now you can see here this is the web page where you have a tiger reserves all the data is given on the left hand side you can find here tiger reserve elephant reserve ramsar wetland site everything is given there all the information is given here national park sanctuaries you'll get everything and here project tiger 1973 project tiger and when you go down here you have the entire information data is given there you'll find all the data is given there even you have articles also there map also the given there you have all the map and given about the tiger reserves we have 50 tiger reserves in india and in the through the mapping it has been given here right now we have got 42 ramsar sites recently the kavar lake or kavar tal in begusarai district of bihar has been declared as a ramsar site maharashtra has got two ramsar site lonar lake very famous lake meteorite lake in buldana district of maharashtra and then nandurbag nandurba nandur madameshwar maharashtra state has got two ramsar sites uttarakhand has got the first ramsar site wetland of international importance that is a asan asan baraj and asan river so now the government has expanded the network of wetlands in india and expanded the ramsar sites there which are wetlands of international importance but what is very important for all of you first you have to know what is a wetland what is a ramsar convention what are the objective of ramsar convention then you have to go through the 42 ramsar sites first you have to know about biodiversity wildlife protection act 1972 project tiger and all then you will get to know from the mapping part right now in my class i will be focusing on the theory part and then linking the theory to the current aspect but detailed current affairs you have to follow detailed current affairs here and very soon you know pt 65 for 2022 batch you will also get pt 65 you have to follow here i will give you current linkage from my own side but again you have the sources to follow here clear and from time to time i will take you to website important websites we will be seeing that in the classroom all right now what i'll do here i will open for discussion 
any question you have do you have any question there anything you want to ask me since i am going to start with the syllabus and the theory part first of all i want that today being the first class if you have anything in your you know you have to ask there you are free to ask me right you all are very free to ask me if you have to ask any aspect you can ask me i have uploaded the material today you have got the material of the topics which i we are going to cover in the classroom i have given you the materials which we will be covering in today's class that is will be that is already uploaded there you can download that what i explained here in terms of whatever i have the explanation i have done do you have any anything here do you have anything to read do you have anything to ask me and we will go in a sequential manner i am not in a hurry i am not in a hurry i am not i don't want to you know rush through right today i have shown you the part i have just mentioned the syllabus part but we'll go in a moderate pace i will not go very slow i will not go very fast i will maintain my own pace looking into the requirement of the students of the class i'll follow my own pace i'll start the syllabus don't worry about the syllabus part i'll begin with that but do you have anything specific regarding whatever overview i have given you want to ask anything you want to you know get any kind of clarification you can do that then we can start with the subject anything you want to ask about environmental part you can say me well then we'll start if you don't have any queries if you don't want to ask about anything regarding source and sources i have referred i'll start with the syllabus part i will help you out to learn every aspect don't worry but uh, himanshu gupta he is asking me a question how to learn current affairs okay what do you what do you do in the monthly current affairs <laughs> right in monthly current affairs class and the teacher who teach you in the monthly current affairs i am 100% sure that teacher would have taught you himanshu about the current affairs part like when you read the current affairs part you have why in the news <laughs> why that that particular animal or plant or anything convention everything has come in the news right then you have a box vision is monthly current affairs you have a box there whatever is given in the box about that news that becomes important when you read newspaper current affairs you have to underline the keyword or i'll suggest one thing just remember your school days right in school days i don't know how many of you have been doing that scrap book you know what is scrap book scrap book scrap what do you used to do you have to cut you will cut the newspaper uh, article right any kind of a magazine or anything which you read you take a print out of that you make a cut of that and then you put in the scrap book and that scrap book becomes a ready reference materials right so what you can do for current affairs let's say hindu paper or indian express or whichever magazine you read whatever current aspect you are reading let's you can cut that area paste on a your scrap book you make a environment scrap book that will become ready reckoner ready revision material for you current affairs but when you are reading that article underline the keywords and connect the keyword with the syllabus link that with the syllabus part right i have already given you example ki what is a wetland types of wetland examples and all 
I have already given you one example. Ask such question. What are the part from the theory part you have to know from that current article what you are reading on that? If it is a climate change, what all things you have to know from climate, climate change, topics from environment ecology and geography and all this part. If it is a ozone layer protection, then what are things about ozone layer? The theory part you have to cover from the syllabus. You have to link with that area. Right? Okay, Yamini Kumavat. She is asking me a question that is it necessary to make separate notes for environment regarding current affairs? Not necessary. <laughs> it's a very hard work, but if you can do it, Yamini, if you can do do it, it will help a uh, help you a lot in the long term. I believe reading newspapers continuously and regularly is a more better exercise than last moment <laughs> going through some kind of material there, right? So I will tell you that it's better when you read newspaper, you make a, you highlight it, make a cut of it. Don't write it there. Writing will take a lot of time. Make a cut of that uh, newspaper article and then put in your scrapbook, right? Okay, Shambhu Kumar. Shambhu Kumar, that book is a now irrelevant book. Don't buy and don't go through that book. <laughs> Which book I, you know that. I will not name the book. <laughs> that book is after a coaching institute from Chennai, Tamil Nadu. Right, you all are aware of that. It came at a time, now see, it came at a time when there was not much study material to read on environment. And it became, all the things were there in that book, it became a, you know, super hit book. All the toppers, everybody will say, read, read it, read it. This one. Vision IS will provide you part 1, part 2, part 3 and it is much better than that book. Whenever you will get the, that study material of Vision IS, part 1, part 2, part 3 and when you go to the content page, it is all comprehensively prepared, you do not require a textbook. <laughs> you do not require the textbook. If you have that book, keep it aside. Right, whenever you have time later on in future, you want to read, then you can follow that. But as of now, keep it aside. What I said that, don't do that mistake of jumping into the ocean. First start learning swimming in a baby swimming pool. Right? Then Mahasagar. Sagar and Mahasagar will come later part. You will first start from a baby step, right? Um, all the websites which I will I'll tell you from time to time, when I will come to the topic, we will come to that one. If you do not have any query with respect to the subject, I will start the subject. Okay. I will start the subject there. So what I will do here now, it is 6 o'clock, let me start with the subject, right? I will begin with the subject, introduce you the subject, we will have certain discussion on the subject and once we are done with it, then we will go to the part of this part, right? So let me clean the whiteboard. Now my request to everyone will be that whatever I write on the whiteboard, Please do copy it. You make a separate notebook for environment ecology and whatever I will be discussing in the sub subject wise, please uh, read that one. Right? Please read all this part. Right? And uh, see one way is that the teacher dictate you the notes. Second thing is that other than the dictation, there may be sometimes the points on the whiteboard which you can copy it. And always try to attend the class. I know that many of you are watching recorded videos. That depends on your uh, priority. But again, 
if you can attend the class much better right so let us start with the subject so environment and ecology right wherever the relevant study materials will be there i will be referring to that so now environment and ecology here you have two terms are there one is the environment and second is the ecology the right? ecology and environment right you all know that the meaning of the term environment when you use the word environment it means surrounding surrounding of the living organisms when we look into our own surroundings our own environment we find sunlight temperature right uh, water air land other type of animals and plants in my environment their surrounding so when we talk about surrounding surrounding is made up of two components right you have a living component that is a biotic components that form the part of the environment at the same time you have a biotic component non living parts of the environment right so when we say biotic components here that comprise of plants animals and microorganisms right and when we look into the part of abiotic components so that include the air soil or land water you have other factors like uh, physical uh, conditions there physical right and uh, adaptive factor like for example soil soil ph right chemical factors minerals and all this right so those all makes the part of the part of the non living components there ecology is derived from greek word oikology you will be aware of this word oikology a greek word oikology now this word oikology that was given by a german scientist named ernst haeckel Ernst Haeckel, a German scientist, in 1869. Let me write the year also. In 1869, he used the word called oikology. From where the word ecology has been derived, right? Now, ecology word here has made up two terms: oikos and logo. Oikos and logo. oiko here means house of living organism plants animals and all the living organisms wherever they are found to live right and logo as you know that is scientific study so in a literal sense when you talk literal sense in a literal meaning of the word oikology from which the ecology word has come it basically means here that is a scientific study of study of a house of living organism wherever the living organisms are found to occur that is what called ecology that is a in terms of literal meaning of the word i am talking about the literal meaning of the word right literal meaning of the word and terms it comes into that but ecology as a scientific study there is a when you talk about living and non living conditions living and non living part of the environment is not a static is not a separate they are interconnected there is a exchange of energy matter there is interrelationship happens there so there is a interdependence and this interrelationship is there
now this interrelationship and interdependence between the living components biotic factors and non living components abiotic factors they are studied under the subject of ecology what is environment environment is everything surrounding has everything living and non living biotic and abiotic but what does the subject of ecology does ecology subject studies the interrelationship between the living and the non living parts of environment right this interrelationship that is where ecology comes into that ecological study comes into that though ecology literal meaning is the study of house of living organisms all right now let's look into that what i have explained here i will just try to uh, go to the handout today i have already given you the handout also there now it will come to your screen and now let's understand here this one i have already given you this uh, handout from the part 1 of the vision is study material understanding ecology we are first starting with the understanding ecology the concept of ecology and environment which i have just explained here now what is here the ecology can be defined right this the, that is a scientific study that is comes under a scientific study right scientific study of interactions of organisms so when we look into environment which consists of all living and non living and when we try to study scientifically the interdependence interrelationship there the subject of ecology comes now the ecology subject this subject here ecology as a subject today ecology right as a subject as a discipline is it has become multi dimensional subject there it derives concepts from various areas of science one area comes biology biology or life sciences that's why in ncert textbook in the class 12 biology you have ecology aspect there right so ecology as a subject comes there and here the interaction comes and what i explained here that it comes from greek word oikology that is ecology is the study of the earth right literally ecology is the study of the earth and is a household of plants human beings animals microorganism and this was given by german geologist ernst haeckel in 1869 you can refer the handout i have already given you handout i'll be using the whiteboard and the handout combination of that right now what would i like to bring here this uh, subject has become so dynamic the subject has become so important that it has brought within its scope many of sub disciplines many times you will come across a word called ecosystem like sometimes we call forest as an ecosystem grassland as an ecosystem desert as an ecosystem so if i have to explain that i'll come to the ecosystem but let's say if i have to explain this part right if you have to explain this part which i have explained here so let's say for example when you talk about environment right if let's say in the subject of the ecology here which is a subject of interaction interdependence right and it looks into here you can you can say that is a study of uh, interactions among living organisms and between living organisms and their surroundings their environment 
that's what the ecology is the subject which deals with that now ecology as a subject comes out with uh, various uh, domains there are various domains are there under which the ecology subject comes into that like for example here you come across here there's something called hierarchy levels or hierarchy of study study within the subject of ecology right the several levels are there several hierarchies there which has evolved over the last so many years of the discipline where the hierarchy has come up now what is this hierarchy here let us understand in this part uh before i go further uh i'll just um, request everyone that whatever i am teaching please go with the class whatever concept i am discussing please follow that whatever points i am writing on the white board please note it down consider this as a class notes consider this as a kind of class notes plus i am also supplementing with you handout which you can follow for your self reading for a self reading part of you can follow that right so since i have started from a very basic level as a subject of ecology i have been starting from a very basic level there i hope that you have copied this then i'll clean the white board i'll clean the white board i'll move to the next part so whatever is given please do write it because i know this is this is a very big batch so there may be different people who may be just watching like a movie like an audience right so um, i will go further now seven levels uh, are there there are certain hierarchies there i'll be covering that one right and i will request you that please write it down at the same time when i am writing on the white board rather than waiting for a long time that will increase the pace of the class right now let's look at here now i am asking a question to the classroom let me see how the students are responding to my question in the classroom and this can be a can be a question in the uh, examination also there right let's say if i ask a question here you get a question like this what is the correct order in this in the study of ecology let's say i am asking this particular multiple choice question what is the correct order of uh, correct order in the study of ecology and i am giving you a very direct question a population biome ecosystem biosphere right option b population ecosystem biosphere biome right third option biome ecosystem biosphere population and the fourth option population ecosystem biome biosphere so what is the answer here what will be the answer here if you get this kind of question in the exam right uh, where you get a direct question that right let me see your answer the the question is this one i want i have written the question that <laughs> let me see your response you can type a b c d whatever you think that you can type that what is the correct order in the study of ecology 
a very simple question i have given here population a is a population biome ecosystem biosphere b is a population ecosystem biosphere biome c is a biome ecosystem biosphere population and the d is population ecosystem biome biosphere hmm most of you are giving me answer c as an answer i can see from my response here many of you are saying c as an answer <laughs> you know why why i have asked this question because you have you have studied environment somewhere in your uh, junior classes not that um, in the school level or college level you have you have not studied about environment and this gives me a fair idea कि कौन कितना पानी में है वेर डू स्टैंड आई कैन गेट टू अंडरस्टैंड फ्रॉम दिस क्वेश्चन मेनी ऑफ यू आर गिविंग मी एज अ सी एज एन आंसर फ्यू ऑफ यू आर गिविंग मी एज अ डी एज एन आंसर राइट इवन देर आर वेरी फ्यू पीपल हु आर गिविंग बी एज एन आंसर अब असली मजा आ रहा है है ना असली मजा अब आ रहा है ठीक है असली मजा अब आ रहा है जब मैंने क्वेश्चन दागा तब पता चला कि कौन कितने पानी में सो फॉर साउथ इंडियन फ्रेंड्स हु आर नॉट वेरी फेमिलियर विथ हिंदी वट आई यूज द हिंदी वर्ड हियर सो आई सेड हियर दैट द रियल इंटरेस्ट हैज नाउ अराइज राइट हैज बिन नाउ because now we get to know who stands where in that deep water translation hindi to english right <laughs> so so sad <laughs> so sad unfortunately most of you have been giving me wrong answer many of you are telling me c as an answer which is a wrong answer c is not the correct few of you are giving b as an answer b for bombay or b for banaras is also wrong answer but there are students who have given me correct answer those who have given me correct answer the answer is d d for delhi <laughs> the correct answer is d d for delhi so those who have given me answer the d they should pat on their back well done <laughs> right but those who have not given me the correct answer don't be demoralized don't be disheartened De don't be demotivated you all i have come to this class to learn right and my task is to help you learn the learning process of that and i will be putting such questions uh, as i continue with the subject i will be putting such kind of question there to see that how many of you are able to respond how many of you are able to get there and i believe learning in the classroom if you go with the classroom it will be much better for you rather than at the last moment opening a textbook and reading that all right so going with the classroom is very important so d is an answer hey right, d is an answer now let's come to that part that's what i said there are certain things which are very very fundamental and you have to be aware of it and then based on that you have to build upon that so let us understand here what i said here is that there are levels of study in the subject of ecology right ecology subject focus on different hierarchy it is also sometimes called holism in ecology this call as a holism in the subject of ecology it is called as the holism in ecology right holism in ecology comes into that all right so holism in ecology in that context let us now go to that this question which i have asked see the first level of study is the organization organism an organism is the first level of study in the subject of ecology and you all know organism will belong to species what is species when it's a tiger as a species or human being as a species what do you mean by that term species here means where the individuals right uh, biologically their individuals are able to reproduce 
to have fertile offsprings which can further can give birth to next generation the part of it perpetuation of generations hereditary part of it so what is species that is based on interbreeding capacity although mule or liger will be exception but the offsprings of liger or mule are infertile but when you talk about tigers or lion or panther or leopard leopard or deer or human being they they can reproduce like deer in their own species can reproduce within the species i'm talking within the species and the offsprings which are there they're fertile ones so first level of study is the organism and organism is a part of population in the subject of ecology the next hierarchy which comes the population study right is the population study now what is population population here means individuals of same species individuals of same species which belong to the same species that is called as a population in a given area in a given habitat all the individuals all the members belonging to same species that is called as population like when you say human population it refers to all human beings in a given particular area when you say tiger population you refer to all the tigers found in that particular area same species now population various type of populations of species that makes a, a very important term called a community what is the word here community biotic community biological community or biotic community what is biotic community or biological community community here refers to all different types of species all different types of species and their populations in a given area and their populations in a geographical area in an area or in a habitat different types of plants and animal species that and their populations that comprise the community we have animal community when you say animal community animal community means all different types of animal species found in that area tiger lion right uh, deer or cow or goat or whatever the animals are there when you say plant community you refers to all types of plants grasses then bamboo then in terms of sal mango neem all types of different type of species there and plant community animal community makes the biotic community now what comes the next one in the hierarchy is called ecological system or what we call as a ecosystem the next what comes here ecological system ecosystem now what is ecosystem ecosystem is a very important term ecological system what is ecology i have written very clearly what is ecology ecology as a subject when you talk about a subject ecology is the subject of interaction and interdependence living and non living and from there the word ecology from there comes the ecological system ecosystem what is ecosystem ecosystem is that area which made of the biological community here the biotic community all plants and animals biotic community all animals and plant species and which are found there together with its surrounding together with its environment its surrounding and their interaction there was a question asked in upsc exam 2015 exam in the prelims exam there was a direct question which of the following best describe the term ecosystem in a given geographical area all the biological community together with their environment and the interaction interaction is again very important one that makes the ecosystem forest is an ecosystem grassland is an ecosystem ecosystem can also be man made 
ह्यूमन कंस्ट्रक्टेड और मैन मेड इको सिस्टम कैन बी पॉसिबल लाइक इरीगेशन कैनाल और एक्वाकल्चर पॉन्ड और रिजर्वायर दे आर द मैन मेड इको सिस्टम वेर यू हैव द स्पीसीज एंड देर इंट्रैक्शन ऑफ देर नाउ वट कम्स द नेक्स्ट लेवल हियर दैट इको सिस्टम द इको सिस्टम गिव राइज टू अ बिगर इको सिस्टम लार्ज जोग्राफिकल एरिया और लैंडस्केप and that is where the concept of biome comes biome next what comes here biome what do you mean by biome biome is a large geographical area there is a large geographical area that large geographical area with the climate distinct climate the distant climate right that is depends on the climatic conditions rainfall temperature wind precipitation all those factors determine the climatic condition of that large geographical area and it has a flora and fauna it has the plants and animals with the plants and animals with plants and animals those who are not able to see i will read out there what is a biome biome is a large geographical area with a distinct climate with plants and animals that form the biome let's take example tropical rain forest amazon amazon in uh, brazil is the largest rain forest of the world is said to be lung of the planet so rain forest tropical rain forest are found in brazil amazon found in africa found in india western ghats western ghats of india we have tropical rain forest andaman nicobar we have tropical rain forest all tropical rain forest worldwide forms the tropical rain forest biome desert extreme desert or whatever desert thar sahara atacama all the deserts that form the biome tundra or tundra you have studied in geography tundra t u n d r a tundra permafrost arctic when we go to arctic like right, we find polar bear we'll hardly find the tall trees and plants we'll find the small plants and so, once in a year when the snow melt thawing and then you have small plants lichens and moss tundra as a biome right oceans form the marine biome all the oceans indian ocean pacific ocean atlantic oceans they form the marine biome now all these biomes right can they make the larger domain that is what is called biosphere all the domains of biomes we take the terrestrial biomes and aquatic biomes aquatic biomes will include fresh water at the same time marine if we take them together it forms the earth where we live the living planet that is the biosphere it forms the biosphere so what is the correct order organism as a part of species become the part of population population of species become part of community community with the interaction and with the environment that forms a ecological system large ecosystem with distinct climatic conditions together with the flora and fauna that forms a biome and all the terrestrial biomes with marine biome form the biosphere so what is correct order population that makes ecosystem you have to select from the choice what about the choice i have given you take based on the choice the what about the words i have given based on choice there ecosystem that will form a biome and biomes will make biosphere d as an answer is it clear right is it clear here everybody is able to understand this concept that's what i have asked the question first your questions answer there you have the terminology there are the concepts are there all right now let's look at here i'll now come to the handout i'll now get back to the handout now let's look at the handout here 
right now comes here what is the ecosystem the person who defined ecosystem if we now look at ecosystem is the community of life forms all types of community and the life forms biological community is there in concurrence with the non living environment non living components of the environment and the interaction with each other this is called as a ecosystem forest is an ecosystem right lake is an ecosystem that's where the ecosystem comes and the term ecosystem was coined by arthur tensley arthur george tensley arthur tensley he gave the concept in 1935 the ecosystem concept was forwarded by arthur george tensley another scientist in the subject of ecology then you can see environment what is environment environment is the sum total of all conditions influences that affect the development and life of all organisms on earth that is what called one surrounding that is what the environment is there you have to be aware of the key terms right you have to be aware of the key terms there all the key terms becomes very very important now what i would do here let's uh, watch a small documentary i will now play a small documentary for all of you and is a very very important concept which i would like to discuss in the classroom here gaia hypothesis i don't know how many of you are aware of this particular concept called gaia hypothesis but is a very very important concept which was given by james lovelock james lovelock scientist he gave the gaia hypothesis right and uh, let us understand this gaia hypothesis i'll just play a small video for all of you the city of manchester is a global hotspot for research in the sciences contributing countless researchers and scientific breakthroughs one such scientist is the infamous james lovelock born in hertfordshire in 1919 he was frequently seen as a maverick throughout his childhood and adult life He dealt badly with authority at his London school and was reported to have refused to test on rabbits during his World War II research instead looking at skin burns by experimenting on himself. After school he spent 2 years in paid work and raised the money so that he could fund his own education studying chemistry at the University of Manchester. Upon the completion of his chemistry degree Lovelock's career varied massively. and included stints working on a Quaker farm, studying a PhD at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, and eventually working for NASA. As he worked on developing sensitive analytical instruments in the hope of detecting extraterrestrial life, it was here that Lovelock proposed the Gaia hypothesis. The Gaia hypothesis, otherwise known as the Gaia principle or theory, was proposed as a new way of understanding our relationship with the planet Earth. Lovelock described the earth as a being in and of itself which interacts with each individual organism. We already know that changes in non-living things like the soil, water or temperature can cause changes in living organisms. This is called natural selection. But Lovelock suggested that this was a cyclical process. So both the living and non-living components change simultaneously so that life maintains the conditions suitable for its own survival. The idea was first developed when Lovelock was working for NASA. He was looking at the elements present in the atmosphere of different planets and compared that to what was found on Earth. Oddly enough, while the atmosphere on Earth was the only one proven to actually allow life, it was also the one that made the least chemical sense. In fact, the balance of elements was so out of whack that it was even close to being explosive. So, it seems that the atmosphere on Earth is best suited for life to be sustained, and in turn, the living organisms on Earth maintain that atmosphere. Recently we've also been given evidence for the Gaia hypothesis in clouds. Organic vapors necessary for cloud formation are generated by bacteria, trees and livestock. And in turn, the clouds maintain the temperature of the earth so that it's best suited for these organisms to survive. So, the Gaia hypothesis offers insight into climate change, energy, health and agriculture. However, many scientists have made large criticisms of the theory, and in particular focusing on situations where living organisms have a negative effect on our planet. If the Gaia hypothesis suggests that the living and non-living grow together in synchrony, 
It doesn't fit with the negative effects we have on our surroundings. In fact, Lovelog even suggests that climate change is not our fault, and instead just a result of our simultaneous evolution. Despite all of these criticisms, the Gaia hypothesis still remains in discussion up to 40 years later, and many researchers continue to consider it as a possible option. And in modern days, similar ideologies form the basis of Earth system science. Let's talk about a difficult concept, the Gaia hypothesis, or um, some people would prefer that it's called a theory now at this point. James Lovelock was working for NASA and coming up with a method to see if there was life on other planets by looking at them through a telescope instead of traveling there, much more cost effective, and using the light coming from the planet to then estimate what the atmosphere was made of. So in his moment of insight, he realized that he could use what it would look like to look at the Earth from space as a model for what light frequencies might be reflected off of an atmosphere of a planet that had an atmosphere capable of sustaining life. What he realized then was that the gases in the atmosphere that reflect the light coming, come from living things. That living things aren't just in the atmosphere but that they help maintain the level of gases in the atmosphere, so they're hoping to maintain the Earth as well. So he had this idea of the Gaia hypothesis, that the Earth behaves like a living thing, and that it maintains its own homeostasis, mostly keeping its temperature constant or relatively constant. He wasn't saying it was a living organism, as it isn't self-replicating. But what it exhibit, but it exhibits the same characteristics of maintaining itself and its own temperature like living things do. And he proposed that the living things and the physical earth are in collaboration with each other. But what came first and, and what is the driving force? Well, this is kind of a chicken and egg question to some degree. The earth was certainly here um, physically and, and geologically active before life. And the geology was um, very active early on. Volcanoes were erupting. Meteors were striking the surface and putting gases and dust into the atmosphere and so on. And this certainly had an effect on the composition of the atmosphere. And it's common to think then the, the Earth came geologically first. And then after the Earth was physically formed and all set and ready, life could appear and evolve on the planet. But of course we know that life itself instead of just responding and evolving on the planet, is actually participating in the evolution of the physical planet as well, and the uh, makeup of the atmosphere. So Lovelock came along and proposed that in actuality, these two things are working together in concert with one another, the, the living systems and the geological systems to maintain the atmosphere. So let's consider a very simplified carbon cycle. The rabbit breathes out carbon dioxide, and the plant breathes that in and then releases oxygen. These two kinds of organisms participate in a cycle that maintains CO2 and oxygen levels in the atmosphere. But that's not all. The animal is also breathing out water that ends up in the atmosphere. And eventually that water rains back down and is absorbed by the plant, which passes the water on to the animal that eats it. Not only are the plants and the animals connected to each other, they are interconnected within the atmosphere and with the atmosphere. As the earth gets covered with plants and ice, these are reflective surfaces and so they cool the planet. And life responds by evolving species that can survive in cooler climates and cooler temperatures. If the amount of plants reduce, for example, or the amount of reflective ice changes, or CO2 is added to the atmosphere, this can cause more heat to be absorbed, and that raises the temperature a bit, which might affect the life as well, which then affects the gases in the atmosphere or the reflectivity of the planet itself, which might then again cause the temperature to lower a little bit. So the Earth is governed by this thermostat of, of living things, if you will, and that maintains the homeostasis. So we have this feedback loop. The temperature rises, which changes the kind of life on the planet, which then might lower the temperature slightly, 
just like shutting off the heat on a home furnace with a thermostat as the temperature rises. This allows the planet to maintain a narrow temperature range that supports life. And this creates then a negative feedback loop because it's a negative feedback loop um, not meaning that it's bad but meaning that as something goes in one direction positive then it, the system responds by bringing it back to the center. And so we have this negative feedback loop allowing the Earth to maintain its own homeostasis through a complex interaction between the living Earth and the geologic Earth. And this is the Gaia hypothesis, or now maybe should be called the Gaia theory, as proposed by James Lovelock. Okay, uh, I played the video. There was a, uh, initially certain type of echo was there. But then I tried to manage it, so that's what uh, I was looking at your feedback in the response, that whether you are able to hear it or not. Um, see, sometimes in the classroom, if I'm pay playing any documentary, any kind of video, it is also relevant for the examination. <laughs> right? Even the question can come from such a documentary which I'll play in the classroom there. And I've taken a very important topic in today's class, and it can be a question in the coming exam. Right? So what I've uh, you've seen in there, that the in terms of Gaia hypothesis, Gaia hypothesis, right? This I played the video there. This particular concept has been given by UK scientist James Lovelock. He gave this hypothesis. What is hypothesis? Hypothesis is a statement which needs to be proved. When you carry out any kind of research, you put across hypothesis. And based on the experiment, based on the finding, based on the research, hypothesis can be accepted or rejected. That's what is called hypothesis. It's not a foolproof concept, but it's a proposed by James Lovelock, which need to be you know, further studied and said that. But now what is the point here? What uh, what this uh, scientist, UK scientist James Lovelock talked about is the word Gaia, here the word Gaia that is from the Greek mythology. It has been taken from Greek mythology. Right? In the Greek mythology, Earth. Right? Earth is called to be Gaia. It is considered to be a goddess. You know, Greek mythology, you have a number of goddesses. Just like in India, we consider our earth as a Prithvi. Prithvi, Prithvi or earth, mother earth, right? We call it a mother earth, right? A savior of the life, giver of the life. We call it in the mythological part there. Even Indian mythology, you have that reference of Prithvi as a mother earth. In Greek mythology, it is called Gaia, right? Now, what is this particular hypothesis that? that the earth earth as a biosphere right earth as a biosphere as a biological sphere is a self sustaining is a self regulating or self sustaining right it sustains all life forms animals including humans plants microorganisms all are sustained they stay in the uh, on the earth there. And earth is the only planet in the solar system which has life. All other planets in solar system do not have the life, but earth has got the life. So there is some kind of inherent mechanism with the earth as a biosphere which control, regulate, sustains all life forms. Right? So here the earth as a biosphere is a self-sustaining with uh, here the one word comes here homeostasis. A very important term is the homeostasis. What is homeostasis? Homeostasis means it maintains equilibrium. It maintains a kind of a kind of a steady state. And that steady state, that equilibrium is maintained through feedback. Positive feedback, negative feedback. Now this theory, Gaia hypothesis, recent time it has come to the headline because of COVID-19. Even the scientists are trying to link COVID-19 with the the recent pandemic, the, the current pandemic which we are going through, 
has been now studied through the Gaia hypothesis through that. Earth always goes to some kind of a changes over a geological time scale. And uh, Earth is facing a lot of changes in the present time. Right, we are making a drastic change to the different ecosystems and all, we are making such changes. But again, Earth has the capacity to regenerate. Right, that happens through homeostasis. Right, and this homeostasis, what is called as your steady state. Steady state equilibrium, which is maintained through, through feedback, steady state equilibrium of all the life processes. Right? All life processes which happen on the earth, carbon cycle, water cycle, nitrogen cycle, all the food chain, food web, right, the cycling of energy, matter, everything. That happens through the homeostasis where you have a feedback. You have a feedback mechanism. Right? And you all know that. What is the biosphere? Biosphere is a layer of living organisms. Wherever we go on the earth, on the land, in the air, on the water, under the water, under the sea, we find different life forms. Right? We find different life forms uh, on the earth. It is said that 20 kilometer thick, we have a biosphere. 500 meters below the sea surface, that is a 500 meter deeper in the ocean, till 6 kilometer in the atmosphere, we have a living sphere called as biosphere. And most of the life forms, right? If we talk about biosphere, right, this biosphere, here most of life forms, most of uh, life forms, vertebrates, invertebrates, whatever the life forms are there, most of life forms exist in a thick layer, there is a thick layer of 20 kilometers, right? starting from 500 meters right 500 meters depth from ocean surface till 6 kilometers in atmosphere Imagine, just imagine, from 500 meters, that is the 200 meters, the sunlight can penetrate the ocean, ocean, what is called photic zone, for 500 meters almost becomes a twilight and dark, from there and we go up to 6 kilometers, 6000 meters in the air, you have all living forms, all living organisms. What I have used the word here, most of living forms, I am not using the word all. Because I know that there are students in the classroom, they will start, you know, kind of uh, putting, exaggerating there. It's not all, I'm saying most of living organisms. There are living organisms even in the bottom of the ocean. Even if you go to the deepest part of the ocean, trenches, Mariana Trench, submarines, there also will find certain type of marine living organisms. So I'm not saying all, I'm saying most most of life forms but still we have life forms even in the ice below the ice in antarctica even in the deepest part of oceans we have life forms but most of the living organisms they are said to exist in this 20 kilometer thick layer what we call as a biosphere right this is what we call as a biosphere so you can say that the earth right if you take here in the atmosphere and let's say the ocean here. So if you take from the ocean 500 meters, what I'm saying here, 500 meters depth, right? And there in the atmosphere, 6,000 meters or 6 kilometers, this particular kind of a part of the what we find, that is what define the extent of biosphere. We call it as a biosphere which include the atmosphere, lithosphere, hydrosphere, right? Wherever that area, we call it as a kind of a surrounded by all living forms, or most of the living forms are there. That is where the biosphere comes there, right? 
and this biosphere where this theory of Gaia hypothesis comes self-sustaining self-regulating unit what you have seen in the documentary the videos right so biosphere as a concept as a part of ecology is a very very important concept that's what we call biosphere as a this is the only the planet what I've said the living planet which is able to sustain living organism there right able to sustain the living organisms all right so now let's come to the part of it uh, further which I have mentioned that right uh, let me come back to the again the handout in the handout also I have given Gaia hypothesis I'll tell you what is given there so let us now come to the handout here see in the box if you go to the box here the two broad classification of ecology ought ecology sin ecology the two classification comes right ought ecology which deals with species and the population sin ecology deals with the community part of it that I have given in the handout in the box you have in the visionized material you have given that so let us now look at here um, this particular part of it and also the Gaia hypothesis which has been given there right so now let's let me mark important points there so now let us look at here this box here the two important areas of ecology called ought ecology what is your ought ecology that is the study of relationship of individual species with the environment right and second is called sin ecology that is the study of plant communities animal communities with respect to the ecosystem that is called a sin ecology or what is also called sometimes community ecology this is also referred to as a community ecology right now this is the Gaia hypothesis which uh, I mentioned I have uh, it is given here what is Gaia hypothesis it is a scientific hypothesis which state that earth is a complex living entity earth is a complex living entity with sustenance of life dependent on self-regulating interactions among organisms and their inorganic surroundings for example climatic conditions depend on the interaction among living organisms like human beings and their non-living atmosphere all of which regulate each other continuously then Gaia hypothesis is named after the mythical Greek goddess Gaia who personifies the earth it was first time proposed by British scientist James Lovelock in his 1972 paper when 1972 paper that Gaia is seen through the atmosphere as seen through the atmosphere and this could be a question this uh, Gaia hypothesis could be a question in the exam UPC can ask you question on that it can be a part of the examination question right now uh, Priyal, Priyal is asking a question that why is earth called as a biome earth is not called as a biome earth is called as a biosphere I have, I have mentioned very clearly I am coming on the whiteboard organism form the population population is the part of community various type of population species they form with the interaction with the surrounding ecosystem and ecosystems make biomes biomes are large geographical area with the, the climatic conditions temperature wind air everything with their unique flora and fauna that's a climatic zone tundra taiga tropical rainforest all these are called biomes when you take all the terrestrial biomes forest biome grassland biome desert biomes and then we take marine biomes ocean that makes the biosphere mr priyal right or miss priyal who, who, i don't know whether you are male or female so the person who has asked me a question earth is not earth is made up of biomes right earth is made up of biomes several biomes they make the earth as a biosphere right what is a biome is a large geographical area based on climatic conditions and with a unique flora and fauna biodiversity part of that is what make the biome right clear here so this is where the limit comes into that thickness of uh, 20 kilometer starting from here right I'm talking in terms of uh, not the height altitude I'm talking thickness I know that many of you are not able to relate with this uh, 20 kilometers that is in terms of uh, see here if you take uh, it will come into how much 6.5 6 kilometers 
right? 6.5 kilometers. That's a, see here, in terms of it comprises different parts of that. Every, every that part together which com constitute together makes a kind of a biosphere. Right? So deepest part of the ocean, right, to the let's say mountain cap, we can think of that kind of a kind of a living entity or kind of biosphere part of it. Right? Twelve miles. That's where it comes into that. Alright? Up to here it is all right. And then you have a levels of organization. In the handout, when I'll come to that, you have got the levels of organization. It's also mentioned in the handout. Please follow the handout which I have uploaded in the, uh, it has been uploaded to your login page, please follow that. So here it is already given here, organisms, right? You have the organism part, they make the basic unit of study in ecology, right? Structure and function. Then population, that is a group of individuals, same species, inhabiting the same area, that form the population. Biological community, that is called biotic community interdependence and interaction among population of different species in habitat then uh, ecosystem that is in the part of the nature of living organisms right parts of nature with where living organs interact among themselves and with the physical environment then when you go to the part of uh, uh, ecosystem is a self regulating self sustaining unit of landscape pond or forest what is a landscape a landscape is a unit of land with a natural boundary having a mosaic of patches which generally represent between ecosystems and then comes biome here comes the biome what is biome biome is a large geographical unit characterized by major vegetation type let's say taiga coniferous forest tropical rainforest right and associated with fauna the animals right found in that specific climatic zone this you study in geography in the climatic zones there right the biome include all associated developing and modified communities occurring within the same climatic region within the same climatic region right like forest biome grassland biome savanna biome desert biome all these are examples and then on a global scale right on a global scale if you look at on a global scale all the earth's terrestrial biomes and aquatic systems constitute the biosphere that makes the biosphere. Right? We will see all the detail part. See, we will be seeing all this uh, detail part later on, right? And here, then comes the biosphere definition. What is biosphere? A biosphere is a part of the earth where life can exist. Biosphere is the part of the earth where life can exist. It represents a highly integrated, it represents a highly integrated kind of a, an interacting zone comprising of atmosphere air then lithosphere and hydrosphere land mass and water that form the biosphere part of the earth where life can exist and highly interact integrated and highly interactive zone comprising of atmosphere lithosphere hydrosphere that forms the biosphere right and then you have a difference between biome and the ecosystem. We'll see that difference. First, I'll make you understand what is an ecosystem. Once you understand ecosystem, you will understand the difference between ecosystem and biome. You'll be able to understand that. All right. So what I'll do here, uh, just a small break. I'll give you a short break now. Right. Let us have a small break here. Right. Uh, uh, five minutes break. I'll give you five minutes break, five to ten minutes break. We'll resume back. Right? After every one and one hour forty-five minutes or two hours, I'll give you a small break. And then we'll continue till eight o'clock. Is it fine? Whenever our classes will be held, I'll start from there, I'll give you a small break of five to ten minutes in between, and then I'll go till till the last of the class. I have started from a very basic level. In today's class, I have started with a very rudimentary, very fundamental level. I have started from the theory part of it. Abhi picture baki hai dost. Right? Asli movie to abhi start hona hai. I am just trying to introduce a new kirdar, new character in the movie. The story has just begun. Right? So, 
what we are discussing today is just a starting point right entire environment ecology is the iceberg we have not seen the tip of the ice we are just seeing the tip of the iceberg the entire of the iceberg we are going to cover and i'll tell you that this subject is very interesting you will all love this subject and you will enjoy the class of environment ecology i have started just from a basic theory part of it right a teacher has to always take care of all types of students aap sabhi mere hai na aise students hain jinka mujhe khayal rakhna hai right and environment ecology you are in my hands theek hai so don't worry right i am going to take you one by one to every aspect of that theek hai abhi picture baki hai dost so now movie will start right so basic fundamental area don't worry about it be happy right and i request you to be part of the classroom and interact in the classroom right rather than just watching you know recorded video is better to be in the part of the classroom and learning in the classroom enjoying the classroom there right let's have a break and come back okay we'll resume back uh, uh, there was a question i know that i have seen in the um, response chat also and one student has asked also that rashi rashi garg has asked the question that what is that 20 km thickness see when you talk in thickness here i am not talking in terms of vertical i am talking in terms of width right the width part of it one comes this one and the width part of it it is basically the life forms which exist whether ocean or something of that so there there i referred that see it's better that if you are getting confused from this word if you have confusion with respect to 20 km that is a that is a part see here better what you can understand is that from the deeper part of the ocean let's say 8 8 8000 meters deep in the ocean till the part of the 8000 meter above the mean sea level so around 16 kilometers you'll come across that right around 16 kilometers around that range comes there that is the kind of a thickness of the entire part you can understand that 20 km thick i am saying i am referring from every aspect from the bottom of the ocean deepest part of the ocean till the you can take mount everest highest peak you know 8848 meters mount everest let's say highest peak if you look at here if i consider it to be 8848 right meters right almost around 9 kilometers right and if you take the deepest part of the ocean right if you take the deepest part of the ocean the ocean again depth will go to 8 kilometer and all this and you consider that so that is the entire you can say the entire aspect of the continent right and the landmass uh, uh, oceans everything that will come also 20 km kind of thickness there but where the most of the life forms are there most of living organisms most of the living organisms will be there but what does that means it does not mean that there is no life form here even the darkest part of the oceans if even we go to darkest part of the ocean even below 400 meter 500 meters again you have a life form marine lives are there ocean is again full of lives you have a jellyfish sponge all those kind of uh, sea animal all these kind of species are found here even the bottom dwellers even the bottom part of the ocean there is something called benthos benthos they are the bottom dwellers so in the geography in the geography you have studied deepest part of the ocean and even we go deeper part mariana trench right we go to trench mariana trench we find the living organism and let's say we go up to 8848 meters that is the highest peak like the mount everest even up to the 9 kilometers we find the living organism you can consider that the deepest part of the ocean here till the part of the part of the the troposphere see there are some life forms which we cannot see the 20 kilometers is referred to here in terms of 20 kilometers we are referring to that part now it is clear here right now it is getting clear there um, many of you had the doubt that uh, i am i have referred here 500 meter depth and 6000 meter above uh, the mean sea level but then i have written 20 20 kilometer means 
if you come from the deepest part of the ocean and then up to the 9 kilometers that part of the troposphere the life forms are there even bacteria bacteria right bacteria we cannot see with naked eyes with naked eyes we cannot see bacteria but bacteria is a part of living living world bacteria are part of the living world even though it is not visible to our naked eyes but they are part of living world hot springs hot sulfur springs the even the ice uh, antarctica snow and ice even the deepest part that bacteria have been uh, found by scientists so that is where the 20 km comes there right so that is what uh, i am talking about the entire uh, range i am this is the talking range there but where the most of the living organisms are there most of the living organism will find in the photic zone till the 6 km this is most of the you can find this part is abundant with life 500 meters to 6 km is an abundant you have more abundance of life form here you have more abundance abundance of life forms are there right is it clear i have written here abundance of life forms which exist in this area abundance will be in this area most of the living organism will be there but if you take the entire biosphere the deepest part of the ocean till it goes to that part right even i have said such microorganisms which we cannot see but they are part of the living world correct is it clear here now the doubt is clear okay now what i'll do here see i am going in a sequential order i am i am giving you the understanding in such a way that you are able to connect with the part of it now let's come to this part let's say uh, what i would like to bring about here is that we will go to the concept of ecosystem we will now uh, study about the ecosystem part of it right we will go to the concept of ecosystem let me clean the whiteboard so that uh, we can discuss this part and since uh, we have started a very static theory in today's class we will at least a uh, uh, couple of classes we will take to complete this kind of a theory part but again remember that the most important part of the examination is the part of the um, wildlife biodiversity climate change pollution they are the more important part what i am now discussing and what i have started here is just the beginning part they are not very relevant from now the examination pattern present examination pattern is not that important but at least you have to know the subject and the syllabus you have to be aware of it so let's come to the concept of ecological system or ecosystem so here the the this concept right which is given by arthur george tensley is it tensley who gave this concept of ecosystem let us understand here i'll put across in the flow chart here which you consider as a mind map so that you can have a quick revision before the exam so i'll make a flow chart in this context see when you say ecosystem first understanding of ecosystem is that in terms of living place that is a here living space or living place or you can say here or physical space physical space occupied by living organism physical space occupied by living organisms that is called as a what we call as a habitats in the subject of environment ecology we use the word habitat living space or physical space occupied by living organism that is habitat comes into that right and here you can take into account two aspect of that there are natural type of uh, ecosystem at the same time there are man made or human constructed artificial types of ecosystems can be there now natural again you can divide into two parts either terrestrial land based terrestrial ecosystems or you can make it uh, can we can understand in terms of classification aquatic fresh water and marine that comes into it. same way artificial can also be land based terrestrial and it can be aquatic right so first understanding of ecosystem is that 
in terms of a living place and there is a classification natural which can be terrestrial or aquatic aquatic can be fresh water or saline salt water or brackish same way artificial can be terrestrial and aquatic aquatic can be again fresh water or brackish let's look at a question here let's look at a question in the let's say if you get a question in the examination which of following is our is our artificial or man made let's say artificial or man made ecosystem let's say you get a question of this kind right and you are given the choice here lagoon farmland national park right and the fourth given here let's say estuary let's say uh, see you basic question setter can give you any example you have to always think broad multiple choice question you have to always think in a broader context and let's say i am giving you the option here 1 2 and 3 2 three and 4 right the next option you have here 2 and 2 only d 1 2 3 and 4 and i'll give you one more option here let let me do one thing 2 and 4 only right let's say you have a choice like this one right 2 and 4 and um, there let's say 2 and 4 no i'll just give give you one more let me change the option here you have here 1 2 and 3 so let's say here 1 then you have a, a 3 and 4 then you have a 2 and 4 right 2 and 4 as an option here 2 only 1 to 3 4 so what will be answer here it can be any kind of options given in the exam hall what can be the answer here is a very direct question which i put across which can be asked in the exam and the or any of the you know examples can be asked in the question paper i have just given you few examples here which have decided on the artificial part of it okay so i am now seeing your responses there i am getting all types of response there is almost looks like a matrix all you guys are giving one after another okay i'm getting that answer there all right good let let me see where the majority has been given there i think the you know <laughs> there has to be voting meter <laughs> just like kbc kon banega karodpati you know all the audience which give the a b c d and you have a graph how many people like you know uh, kbc amitabh bachchan and kbc when the question is asked ask the audience right audience poll so there is a voting machine and you get a graph that a how many people have given b has given c and d if that kind of thing is there it will be really very interesting but anyway that system is not here so we'll manage with uh, your answer here anyway whatever you have given here so the answer here is uh, let's go to one by one lagoon let's say for example chilika lagoon chilika lagoon which is the largest uh, you know uh, lake area by state the largest lake in india that is chilika lagoon in odisha right pulikat lagoon all the lagoon so lagoon here chilika is the is a natural type of it's not a it is not a artificial it's a natural pulikat lagoon between andhra pradesh and tamil nadu chilika lagoon which is the largest uh, lake of india in odisha puri and ganjam district on that part of it right so that comes again natural one right now farmland farmland let's say for example a uh, crop cultivation where we have a crop cultivation which we carried out there 
is a man made wetland is a artificially created or human constructed wetland so two is definitely a artificial wetland now coming to national park let's say for example kajiranga national park let's say kajiranga national park in assam is it a natural or a man made which is known for great one horn rhino tiger greater one horn rhino then elephant is it a natural or a man made or let's take another example let's say i'll give you another example here uh, one national park i've given let's take uh, example bandipur where is bandipur national park it is in the state of karnataka which is part of the nilgiri biosphere reserve bandipur near to mysore in the state of karnataka and it forms a part of the nilgiri biosphere reserve is it a natural or a man made or let's say very famous one corbett national park jim corbett national park in uttarakhand is it a natural or man made <laughs> many of the students they think that national parks are man made have we done there some kind of changes there no what change we have done we only mark the boundary we only create the boundary if this is a national park let's say if this is the national park by law we only designate the boundary under wildlife protection act under the law we only make the boundary but this habitat this area this area is a natural forest it is basically a natural forest this area which comprises the national park national park is for the protection of the wildlife and by law we only mark the boundary but this habitat this area is a natural forest or a grassland or a desert or whatever the the ecosystem is there that is natural so national park is a natural it is not though we create though we create the boundary though we mark the boundary for protection of animals and plants within the national park but still that habitat that ecosystem is a natural one right now coming to estuary mouth of the river let's say for example you know that i'll just give you example narmada narmada which makes the estuary in uh, gujarat arabian sea is a natural one is also a natural one so what is the answer here the answer is a c two only yes uh, man made lagoons are there there are sometimes uh, humans also can create forest i'll just give you one example a very important person in india he has come in the headlines he belongs to assam and he is called forest man of india i don't know how many of you are aware of his name his name is jadav payeng jadav jadav payeng from assam at the age of 17 years he started you know planting the sapling and today he has created a forest on the bank of river brahmaputra in assam where you have one horn rhino you have a tiger lion everything is there so jada paying forest man of india has created artificially there but actually that forest has become a natural one no though human beings can also create forest we can also create artificial lagoon like if you go to gulf countries gulf gulf countries they have created artificial island sometimes artificial island is also created <laughs> right man made kind of island kind of thing. see whenever you get question of this nature whenever you have a question of this kind you have to always take from the general context <laughs> there may be man made lagoon there may be sometime man made island right uh, man made forest there are exceptions they are exceptions you have to consider from a general context <laughs> right you have to consider from a general point of view from geographical point of view from general point of view though human beings can construct such kind of thing but they are exceptions clear there is it clear right so that's what the answer is c as an answer all right so um that's what i in between i will always put across the questions for interaction right control conditions and the, are required there 
so is it clear this question i will now uh, remove this from the white board so that i can complete the flow chart so what is very important thing here one type of question which you can get in the examination that may be a direct question about type of ecosystem whether it is a human constructed artificial or man made or naturally occurring ecosystem there now let's go go back to the flow chart now what comes here about the ecosystem concept what is the next part which comes into ecosystem concept the next part what comes here the components the structure right structure of the ecosystem if we look at the structural components right what and what makes an ecosystem the structural components right any kind of a ecosystem what it is made up of right what is the structure of, of them so structural component we can divide into two biotic biotic components and abiotic components right living and non living biotic components you can take here flora different type of vegetation and plants fauna in terms of all animals type there and also microbes microbiota microorganisms which are found in soil water and all this part they form the living components whereas the non living components here that can be physical component right let's say for example sunlight light temperature right ph salinity etc or it can be chemical components chemical factors for example minerals inorganic minerals carbon nitrogen sulfur found in the soil or it can be organic compound organic materials right organic compound carbohydrate and uh, proteins right uh, dna all those kind of compounds can be there and third can be geological geological factors that will include what so physical chemical geological what will include that that will include here atmosphere air right lithosphere land and hydrosphere that is in terms of water that forms a geographical point of view that comes into geographical aspect right now what comes here what is the functions of an ecosystem role or functions of ecosystem ki what type of role what type of functions ecosystem has got so here in this role and functions the first thing comes here flow of energy now flow of energy in terms of feeding pattern right in terms of food or feeding pattern in terms of food and the feeding pattern so that is studied under three models are there concept of food chain right concept of food web and then there is a third concept called ecological pyramids natural ecosystem helps in the flow of energy and that happens with the food and that is studied in ecology by three concepts food chain food web pyramids now what is second function second function is cycling of materials cycling of nutrients carbon water sulfur phosphorus right all this kind of nutrients what we call here as a nutrient cycle nutrient cycle or there is a another name called as a bio geochemical cycle right there is another function played by ecosystem we will be studying about this cycling of nutrients now what is third here like here if you look at the two types are there gaseous uh, cycles are there right for example carbon 
नाइट्रोजन ऑक्सीजन एंड वाटर हाइड्रोलॉजिकल दिज आर कॉल्ड गैसियस साइकिल वेर एज द सेकेंड टाइप इज कॉल्ड सेडिमेंट्री साइकिल सेडिमेंट्री साइकिल न सेडिमेंट्री साइकिल यू हैव टू ऑफ देम सल्फर सल्फर साइकिल इज अ सेडिमेंट्री साइकिल विल विल अंडरस्टैंड इन द क्लासरूम वेर आर कम टू डिटेल पार्ट ऑफ बायो जियो केमिकल साइकिल विल अंडरस्टैंड वाई सल्फर इज अ सेडिमेंट्री साइकिल ऑल दो सल्फर ऑल्सो एग्जिस्ट एज सल्फर डाइऑक्साइड गैस इन द एटमोसफेयर विच इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर एसिड रेन राइट नाउ वॉट कम्स थर्ड वन थर्ड फंक्शन इज इकोलॉजिकल सक्सेशन वॉट इज इकोलॉजिकल सक्सेशन डेवलपमेंट ऑफ अ न्यू इको सिस्टम बैरन लैंड अ बैरन लैंड बिकम्स अ मेच्योर्ड फॉरेस्ट इको सिस्टम ओवर अ लॉन्ग इंटरवल ऑफ टाइम सक्सेसनल डेवलपमेंट ऑफ अ इको सिस्टम ऑफ एन इको सिस्टम दैट कम्स थ्रू अ फंक्शन कॉल इकोलॉजिकल सक्सेशन अगेन दैट इज लिंक विद इकोलॉजिकल सिस्टम देर अ लैंड विच वॉज बैरन लैंड वेर देर वॉज नो वेजिटेशन नो ट्रीज एंड प्लांट एंड आफ्टर हंड्रेड ईयर्स आफ्टर टू हंड्रेड ईयर्स द सेम लैंड बिकम्स अ थ्राइविंग फॉरेस्ट दैट इज वेर द इकोलॉजिकल सक्सेशन कम्स देन कम्स यर वॉट फोर्थ इन टर्म्स ऑफ होम्योस्टेसिस maintaining the equilibrium maintenance of equilibrium and self regulation ecosystem can regulate itself that's where the homeostasis comes into that right these are the four important functions of a ecosystem either flow of energy from food food chain food web pyramid nutrient of cycling nutrient cycle or biogeochemical cycle gaseous cycle or sedimentary cycle or ecological succession development of new ecosystem homeostasis self regulation which can regulate itself correct so what i have done here first i have given you in terms of the flow chart so uh, inko pura uh, zoom karke zoom out karke dikha dijiye kindly copy this one and you have any question you can ask me i have just moved away from the board right i have just given you a kind of a summarized kind of thing there right uh, which you need to remember see national park is a natural type of ecosystem only we mark the boundary using legislation wildlife protection act in situ conservation we make the boundary of the national park or sanctuary by declaring in a or by notifying in a gadget official gadget but that particular habitat is a natural type of habitat when we are saying artificial means when we do changes we bring about some kind of land use change changes in the forest bring about some drastic changes then we can say it is artificial but a natural national park under the wildlife protection act is a natural type of habitat that interfere means what interference we are not talking about uh, drastic inter interference sweta is saying that uh, there is interference by humans see we there are local tribe there are local communities which live in the such kind of habitat right we will study ecological succession don't worry ecological succession we are going to study all these topics what i have written all these topics we are going to learn in detail here just in the first class i have given you the kind of what are the functions there but the detail of each of the things we are going to cover in the classroom so please uh, don't worry lakshya is saying that ecological succession we will go in the detail of that i am not going to leave that topic right whatever i have written here food chain food web pyramid right uh, bio chemical cycle then ecological succession homeostasis we will be studying all this in detail don't worry about that a uh, homeostasis also we will discuss that sardha is asking a question that homeostasis uh, there what is homeostasis i'll tell you 
it is again a forest or a grassland or a any kind of natural ecosystem it tries to again maintains the balance just take one example i'll just give you one example if there is a forest fire if there's a wild fire or forest fire or we def we carry out deforestation and if we leave it untouched you'll find after 10 years 20 years or 50 years the forest will come back the regeneration of forest and that is a natural process the regeneration of forest that is natural process so that is a kind of self regulation there are some kind of natural processes which control its own function right which control its own function now when i say ecosystem maintains homeostasis cycling of energy or cycling of nutrient matter or flow of energy in all these areas there is some kind of a feedback that tries to maintain an equilibrium state right a loss of the forest and if we don't disturb further the forest will spring back forest will regenerate right forest will regenerate there a soil a soil which is depleted of the nutrient let's say when you go for excessive farming too much of farming and the nutrient of the soil is lost if we keep that soil or land open and we don't interfere there because of carbon cycle nitrogen cycle sulfur cycle the nutrients will come back right we'll see that one don't worry uh we will come across it. so please copy that some people have asked me question that's what uh, i have gone to that please copy the flow chart inko pura dikha dijiye aap and don't worry i am going to cover all this food chain food web pyramid newton cycles right ecological succession homeostasis we'll all discuss that don't worry about it today is the first class we are going to cover all these topics and please go through the handout the handout which have been given to you please read the handout the handout has been uploaded in the part of that so this is not a syllabus syllabus also has got the biodiversity climate change pollution eia this is just a one topic of the syllabus here i have written ecosystem i am here referring to ecosystem this is just a ecological concept i am i am discussing in the classroom ecological ecological concept there so who is this guy mr rathod shivam rathod this is not a syllabus i told you very clearly in the classroom that the lot of things are there right so syllabus is not that uh, this flow chart which i have drawn and then i have written the ecosystem and uh, i have just given this is not the syllabus the environment syllabus is very vast there is a climate change global warming ozone depletion pollution topic eia then you have biodiversity right it just the introduction of ecosystem good very good abhishek is very right abhishek just there is a brief introduction of ecosystem abhishek you are correct this is just a brief introduction of ecosystem we are going to learn in detail in the classroom there uh we will cover that um, gaseous and sedimentary cycle we will learn that when we come to the biogeochemical cycle i will come to that ki what is the difference between gaseous cycle and sedimentary cycle i will be discussing that gaseous cycle just remember where the reserve pool all these cycles are based on reserve pool right the reserve pool for gaseous cycle is atmosphere and ocean whereas the reserve pool of uh, sulfur and phosphorus sedimentary cycle is the earth crust 
अर्थ क्रस्ट अर्थ क्रस्ट इज द रिजर्व पुल ऑफ सल्फर एंड फॉस्फरस वेर एज द रिजर्व पुल ऑफ गैसेस साइकिल दैट इज द कार्बन वॉटर नाइट्रोजन एंड ऑक्सीजन दैट इज द एटमोस्फेयर और ओशन विल सी दैट विल स्टडी दैट इको सिस्टम इज द सम टोटल ऑफ लिविंग एंड नॉन लिविंग एंड द इंट्रैक्शन वेर एज द इन्वायरमेंट इज जस्ट सिंपली द सराउंडिंग इन्वायरमेंट वेन यू यूज द इन्वायरमेंट इज जस्ट सिंपली द सराउंडिंग विच कंसिस्ट ऑफ लिविंग एंड नॉन लिविंग बट वेन वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी इंटरैक्शन अमंग लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म एंड लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म एंड द इन्वायरमेंट दैट इज द सराउंडिंग non living factor which help in survival that scientific study is called as a ecology and in ecosystem let's say forest or grassland or ocean we study that kind of interaction which take place in that particular habitat that's where the ecosystem comes all right so we will end up the class all of you copied this all of you have copied this flow chart this is just the kind of a summary of uh, what we are going to learn in the next class in the next class i will be going through all this uh, concept our next class topics will be this one what i have written on the functions of ecosystem all right now you have a assignment question here so let me give you assignment question assignment question is that discuss importance of natural ecosystems the assignment question is that discuss importance of natural ecosystems in terms of of uh, discuss importance of natural ecosystems in terms of uh, benefits derived by humans what is the question here the question is that discuss importance of natural ecosystems in terms of benefits derived by humans so you have to answer in 150 words this question you have to write means question 150 words and 10 marks question i repeat the question homework assignment discuss importance of natural ecosystems in terms of benefits derived by humans i will give you that answer when i come to a topic called ecosystem services when in the classroom we will discuss the benefits what we get from ecosystem i will be teaching you in that classroom respective classes which will come now the, the coming classes we will also discuss about ecosystem services there you will get the answer of this question this question what i have given that answer will come in that part but again you try it out you read about it you try to answer that it is given in the handout also last part of handout there is ecosystem services you can follow that and write the answer in 150 words importance of natural ecosystems in terms of benefits derived by humans derived by humans you will write in 150 words 10 marks question okay guys today being the first class so um, i know that um, many of you are very new to the subject and uh, slowly and slowly you will get to understand the entire aspect of the environment ecology so we'll meet in the next class and today being the good friday right today is good friday so i wish you a very happy good friday and tomorrow is the easter so i wish you happy easter right easter is not considered to be very happy because easter is linked with the you know jesus christ resurrection the jesus christ who was uh, crucified right and then again the jesus christ came back resurrection of jesus christ that's what the christians worldwide they celebrate this uh, easter part and today is the good friday so i wish you a happy good friday and the easter you know right on saturday you have the easter there so we'll meet in the next class there 
and uh, total number of classes will be 12. I am going to cover the entire syllabus in 12 classes. 1, 2. In 12 classes, uh, Vision IS provides me 12 classes to cover all the cover all the fundamental theory part and the syllabus part. So 12 classes I will be covering the environment and ecology subject. I told you very clearly that all the current aspect, all the current development with respect to environment and ecology, you have to cover from monthly current affairs classes and PT365, main 65. I don't teach that. right? I don't teach uh, monthly current affairs environment part and I don't teach the PT65 and all, that you have to cover from there. I will cover all the basic part of the syllabus, but yes, when I will be discussing certain concept from the syllabus point of view and there are current development, there is some kind of current linkage is there, I will definitely take you to the current linkage. While my discussion on the particular topic, if there are some current aspect, I will connect with that. But what I want to convey here in the classroom that the detailed part of it or detail or depth, very depth analysis, very detailed you know understanding or detailed discussion of uh, newspaper articles or current aspect and all this will not be possible here in this class. So let me be very clear in today's class itself there. Current affairs itself is a very vast area. If I start teaching all the current topics of environment ecology with the theory, it will take something around 50 to 100 classes. <laughs> okay. So that is not the possibility here. Vision IS has very clear cut uh, division. All current affairs topics in your monthly current affairs classes, PT 365, main 365. All the theory part, syllabus part, that is in the regular class. So since uh, this is the regular class, this is a regular foundation class for pre-cum means PCM. So my effort, my focus will be more to cover from the syllabus point of view. I will be connecting the syllabus with the current aspect, but the entire detail of the current aspect, that you have to cover in the current affairs classes. Is it clear here? Okay. So we will stop here the class and uh, we will continue with the all the theoretical part in the next class. Alright. So thank you everyone. Good night.